Hello to everyone. Uh, so let me start to introduce myself. I'm Davide Forlone, responsible of enrollment and admission in Domus Academy. Today is uh, uh, the first uh, lecture related to how to present your portfolio for fashion design and fashion styling programs. Uh, and uh, uh, will be done by our program leader, Gianfranco Olivotto. This is the first one of uh, uh, a series of lectures dedicated to uh, the next one will be how to create a design portfolio, then will be how to create a portfolio for business courses, and the last one will be uh, brand yourself. So how to present yourself, how to, pre how to prepare a motivational letter to apply for a universities. All of these uh, uh, lectures uh, will be recorded and uh, will be available on our YouTube channel, so Domus Academy YouTube channel. Uh, let me say thank you very much uh, for joining uh, this lecture, and uh, I leave the stage uh, to Gianfranco so he can start uh, with uh, the presentation. If you have uh, any questions, uh, Please uh, do the questions at the end of the presentation uh, so we don't have to stop the presentation and uh, write uh, directly on the chat. Uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, please uh, Gianfranco. Good morning, thank you Davide. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us in this uh, session uh, that uh, it's going to be about how to present your own portfolio. And then, uh, okay, I can introduce yourself, I'm myself, and then I will go on. So I'm a program leader of the Master in Fashion Design and uh, the Master in Fashion Styling and Visual Merchandising. Of course, uh, um, this uh, includes uh, all uh, the, fashion, the fashion area. So today, we, what we are going to do, of course, there are two different approach uh, uh, in uh, presenting uh, uh, fashion design portfolio and a styling portfolio. So what we will do at the beginning, we will have just uh, some uh, tips, uh, some rules about how to present a portfolio. And then we will go in details uh, by looking at uh, some best practices uh, of uh, alumni uh, in, of our school. And um, so we will go step by step in order to understand how to organize uh, your, uh, your portfolio. The portfolio, of course, it's uh, why we focus on uh, this uh, kind of lecture, because the portfolio is uh, uh, one of the most important tools uh, you may have, uh, because uh, it uh, puts in contact, uh, it's the link that puts in contact uh, you with uh, uh, your educational and uh, professional uh, world. So it's uh, extremely important. It's your business card, and uh, so it's something that uh, you have to arrange in the best way. Of course, it's going to be something personal because we really appreciate what is personal in our portfolio. We just want to give you some additional tips and rules on how to organize your best projects in order to present yourself in the best way. Most of the time, you will not have a direct contact, but it will be just, uh, yeah, there is a question. Yeah, but probably we can answer. If you can write your question, then I will answer later. Um, so I was saying that uh, it's uh, extremely important that you present uh, in the best way and uh, that your projects uh, and your portfolio can be uh, self-readable uh, 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 because you will not have to, you cannot interact, but you have to attract the attention of the viewer of your portfolio. So let's go on because we have uh, a lot of slides and we have just uh, 30 minutes uh, left <laughs> for this. Uh, so uh, some of uh, the rules and keywords that you have to keep in mind in order to organize your workshop. First of all, of course, it's clarity because uh, uh, of course, at school, we have time to read in a more detailed way. But if you are doing a professional portfolio for a job interview, uh, one of the most important things is the clarity and the synthesis of uh, the project that you are putting in your portfolio. Then another very important uh, 
uh, key words in the storytelling. There is no project without a story behind. So we like uh, telling story and we like you to tell us uh, the story behind your project. And of course, uh, personality. Your personality should uh, come out from uh, this uh, project because uh, since I was saying we do not have uh, a physical interaction, but it will be a physical or digital portfolio, we need uh, to uh, understand better by um, your words, by your style, by your, the layout of the portfolio, what uh, you will be uh, <coughs> proposing. Just want to see if uh, there is a, okay. Um, so let's go on. Okay, so I was, we were talking, we were talking about uh, synthesis. So uh, what do you have to put in your portfolio? Less is more because it's not important uh, the uh, quantity of the project uh, and uh, the amount of uh, the description of the project that you are going to tell, but uh, the quality. So uh, what is important is that uh, you can, you have to select uh, the best project that you did in your career, in your educational career or professional career that have to catch the audience attention in few seconds. I'm a retailer, so it's something like a, a window display. A window display must catch you the attention in uh, five seconds. If it doesn't uh, catch your attention, you will pass over. So the same thing, happens in your portfolio. So if you can attract the attention of the viewer and uh, it, you will uh, um, reach uh, what uh, is your aim. So uh, you have to present your portfolio, of course, your strongest works. Uh, what do you think they are the, your strongest works? But at the same time, uh, uh, what uh, uh, the project that uh, received uh, a, a gr great feedback from uh, your viewer, from your team um, <clears throat> teammate, and uh, teachers as well. Uh, it's important that you create an index of the contents because uh, do not put your project in scrambled order. So just uh, probably you can start with the most uh, uh, recent or the one that you think is the most uh, strong, uh, the strongest work. Uh, it's important, the, the, the index, because you have to guide the viewer through the understanding of all the different uh, Projects. It's not uh, um, so. It's extremely important that uh, uh, after a, fair, a cover, there is a, a, an index with the name of pages, so that the viewer can understand. Okay, I'm interested in this project. I can go to page uh, twenty. And of course, uh, the content uh, must be easily re rearrangeable because, of course, uh, you are proposing your project uh, to different uh, for different purposes. Uh, can be an admission uh, to a um, master school uh, like uh, ours, but also for a job interview. So uh, just. Uh, thinking uh, to the people that is going to look, the company that is going to look at your portfolio, you can uh, rearrange uh, and uh, we can do this uh, easily with, uh, in a digital way. Uh, what you have to show a part of your projects uh, or what this project must uh, reflect, uh, they must reflect your identity and uh, of course uh, your main skills. Uh, it's important that you highlight the skills that uh, you developed during the workshop. What are your strengths uh, and interest? Of course, in this case, uh, it's going to be about fashion. And uh, what is uh, your career aspiration? So we can talk about uh, a short-term uh, aspiration, but also a long-term aspirations. Uh, that is. Uh, extremely important for us to understand uh, what, uh, uh, what is uh, your main purpose in joining uh, the school or the company. And of course, you have to keep uh, this uh, project update. Uh, it's something that uh, you will always uh, change in your life. So it's something that uh, uh, you you will change the layout, you will change uh, uh, some details, uh, but uh, it's important that uh, you keep it update. 
Of course, uh, you do not have to present only the final outputs of your project uh, because uh, this is uh, interesting. Uh, this is usually done uh, by uh, big professionals that uh, they do not have to explain uh, all the different all the process. Uh, but uh, for a student, uh, for the first job interviews, it's really important that you present your design projects uh, from the brief uh, to the final uh, results. Um, then we will uh, have a look at this. Uh, remember that your portfolio is uh, the only communication tool that you have with the rest of the world, and uh, it should be readable, as I said before, and uh, it it should include the project that you are happy with and can defend at the best. Uh, you are going to be the lawyer of uh, your single project. So uh, in case that then there will be after the presentation of a portfolio, a physical job interview. Uh, so you just uh, find out the ways in order to defend in the best way your, uh, your project. So what uh, uh, is going to be how to structure your portfolio? So first of all, a cover page, of course, uh, that uh, is uh, showing uh, um, your title, for example, because uh, it's important also that you define yourself as a fashion designer, a fashion stylist, uh, or retail and visual merchandiser. A very short bio, because of course, this is, will be presented also in your CV. And of course, the index, the index of the different projects. Um, you have to select, uh, we do not care about looking um, at a lot of projects, but select your uh, four, five, five uh, best projects. And uh, every project, even if they were uh, developed in different contexts, uh, just uh, try to be uh, consistent. So use uh, the same cover page for all the projects. So just putting your title, uh, then uh, of course uh, a short brief, um, the project details, the year where you when you developed, if it was a teamwork and uh, which kind of role you did inside the project. It will be extremely interesting for us also to see uh, if you um, participated to competitions, even if you didn't win, but it's interesting that uh, you are this uh, um, kind of uh, interest in participating to competitions, if you had any publications or special projects, and in the end, of course, if you achieved any kind of awards. It's not, of course, compulsory, but if you have this kind of material, of course, you have to show. And then the last part will be about personal contact. Of course, you have to show yourself uh, details about uh, how you, we, can, we can be in contact with you. And uh, it uh, may include uh, an Instagram account, but uh, in this case, I will suggest that uh, if uh, it is uh, designed as a professional Instagram account, it's okay. Otherwise, if, if it's just a collection of uh, selfie where uh, um, you are a model, uh, it's not uh, something that uh, you, you, you better avoid this. But just uh, create uh, an Instagram account and put uh, your uh, the link of the account because uh, it's uh, some further information that you can give uh, to the viewer of your portfolio. So, what is extremely important for us to understand when you're doing a portfolio, it's the tech pack, technical drawings and illustrations. We will have a look, of course, of these. Illustrations for fashion design, it's uh, particularly interesting because, of course, uh, it's very personal. Everyone has got his own style, his or her own style, in order to draw sketches. So it's uh, something that reveals uh, some part of your personality. Of course, uh, you do not have to be a big illustrator to be a fashion designer, because I met in my life a lot of fashion designers that are not so good in giving illustrations. 
but uh, it's something that uh, uh, it's interesting to see. One extremely important thing is the technical drawings. Technical drawings because you know that uh, uh, no one uh, or just a few companies are producing uh, um, the product uh, in their in their company, but they're outsourcing. So uh, if you do not give the right instructions about uh, technical drawings, about uh, these flats, it will be impossible and it will take a longer time in order to produce uh, the, the collection. Then you can have, of course, we are a visual uh, uh, <laughs> fashion designer and a stylist and retailer are visual. So we like a lot to look at uh, images uh, or lookbook or to cut workshop. Everything that can give uh, us uh, an idea of uh, um, the project in a visual way is more direct than a text. So just use a very short text uh, in order to describe the, pro the, the project brief, but then uh, you can use uh, um, a lot of images. So this is just a, a, um, a photo shoot of uh, a garment that we did in Domus. Uh, then, of course, uh, this is a sort of lookbook that is uh, really personalized by the students uh, with uh, by shooting the the lookbook in different locations according to the style of the model and then again the technical drawings the one that you're going to send to the uh, supplier that are going to produce your project the clearer they are the best it is for us uh, yeah this is another example of uh, um, how to wear and then of course uh, images of a uh, catwalk show is uh, uh, some images of uh, a catwalk show of a student that we did during Fashion Graduate Italia, uh, where our school is participating. And of course, this is a look of the student and then the final uh, with all the students that took part in the presentation. So what do you have to avoid in proposing these images is just to avoid the low resolution images, stretched images and misspelled words. These are the things that uh, make us uh, uh, crazy because uh, we cannot accept that uh, as a visual uh, you are showing a uh, stretched images. So just uh, keep uh, um, the best resolution, uh, do not use it uh, and avoid uh, misspelled words. Let's see a, an example of a portfolio in fashion design. As you can see, this is the cover of the student. Uh, she was, uh, of course, uh, she's showing her personality by this, uh, by using a, a different kind of cover with a, a barcode uh, with her name uh, as a fashion designer. And of course, then you enter like in a website into her portfolio. Uh, this is of course uh, some information about uh, her. Um, that was her life uh, at Domus Academy. So in this case, uh, she's proposing uh, the projects that she developed at school and uh, during her internship. And then, of course, as you can see, we have uh, the index. Uh, the index that I will suggest also to put the number of the pages so that is going to be better. So uh, as you can see, there are just five projects, uh, including the uh, internship. So the first one was the fashion collection. As you can see, it's very clean and uh, clear. Um, that uh, just uh, gives you some information about the people that took part in the project. Then there is uh, the brief with the, the concept of the project. There is also the mood board that uh, she developed in order to develop this uh, collection. A sketchbook, uh, I mean, it's really interesting for us to see the workbook with the process. So if you just uh, then can select some of uh, the best uh, pages in your workbook, that is also the brainstorming or uh, how you develop the concept. This is uh, the professional way in order to um, develop a collection. Another example of flash that just gives uh, 
you the idea of what she's going to do just using uh, these uh, uh, strong colors, neon lights, uh, and uh, the rest. Then uh, the lineup of uh, uh, the illustration with the color, color chart and uh, the selection of uh, material. In this case, in the first project, there is no uh, technical drawings because it was her first project, so she was not so able. But then you will see that she will progress, and in the end, she realized very good uh, technical drawings as well. The photo shooting of uh, the final prototype that she developed, of course. Uh, do not use yourself as a model, please, uh, but uh, if you want to use yourself, just cut uh, uh, the faces or just put some details uh, that it was going to be better, or in this case, you can hire a professional model. Fashion Identity is another workshop that uh, we do in uh, our school that develops uh, your own identity as a fashion designer. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, uh, she developed uh, her concept, uh, then uh, she pro is proposing in this slide uh, not only the mood board but also the brief and what she developed. So strong research on her own identity, um, mood board, technical drawings, illustrations, uh, material card. Okay, and so as uh, you can see again the sketchbook. Can you see the question? Okay, anyway. And uh, okay, we'll have him uh, later for questions. Uh, surface exploration. In this case, of course, she was uh, uh, exploring uh, the volumes, uh, so she did uh, some uh, pattern making. So it's a skill that she's going to present that is extremely important. The line up again, as you can see, they all follow the same, it's consistent. Uh, it doesn't change from one project to the other one. Then uh, technical drawings uh, with uh, some illustration uh, and material. Uh, and then, of course, uh, she also developed the prototype. So her skills in developing the final um, garment. Um, another project, uh, as you can see, the same cover, um, the same uh, style, the same layout, so it's clear, and uh, uh, so that everyone can have an understanding at uh, first uh, glance. Then, of course, a sketchbook with some technical drawings, uh, uh, where she improved a lot. Uh, it's a nice uh, this, uh, idea of putting the, the, um, the real pictures with the sketches, with the technical drawings. The lineup of the collection, she used a collage and uh, the technical drawing. As you can see, this is a professional way of proposing technical drawings. She created her own template and uh, she put uh, all the different uh, guards in this way. Technical drawings again, and then the final shooting with a sort of advertising campaign as well, because she was really interested also in developing a styling part. And that's why she joined also for a fashion styling project. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, the project was uh, with a uh, um, social media uh, website. Uh, it's, uh, we're focusing on uh, millennial girls. So she developed a very fresh and young by using collage, a different kind of material, her mood board and all the content that was just uh, to the, one of the most important things of the brief was to plan for different uh, uh, part of the uh, day. And then, of course, a final shooting with a very high, good, re high resolution uh, pictures. So, um, okay, uh, let's go, let's pass now to styling and uh, retail. So, even here, it's extremely important to have uh, technical drawings and 
um, of course, your idea can be uh, very creative, but uh, if you do not render your project in the best way, it will uh, lose uh, our creativity. I mean, uh, uh, we want to show creativity. Uh, creativity is crucial for your personal success. As Albert Einstein said, the creativity is intelligence, having fun. And it is an essential aspect uh, of uh, your professionality. So creativity, but you have also to join to, with uh, a good uh, render of your project. In this case, what was a project about uh, Montclair with all the details about the window display. This is another window display. This is the facade of the store in Via Monte Napoleone in Milan. And then, of course, also the study uh, of the plan, the store plan, with a high um, bird view, uh, because this uh, will give you also details at the positioning of the different props inside the window. And then, of course, the project was also translation of the um, the sketch uh, or the window display concept into a, a pop-up store in a mall. And we have a, a good uh, rendering in 3D about that shows, of course, the skills of uh, of the event as uh, an expert uh, um, able to develop a 3D. Of course, this is the technical drawings of the pop-up store. Uh, it's extremely important for retailer that, that uh, wants to start their own profession to show this kind of uh, um, skill because, of course, you know, we're talking about ephemeral architecture. So ephemeral architecture means that uh, uh, you have to set up uh, the window display, the store installation at, in, at night and uh, you will not have any other kind of help. So if you have uh, good details about the project, everything will be fine. Otherwise, the store will be closed for one day and it's not uh, uh, what they, they want. Uh, so um, also editorial and visual branded content. So in the styling, of course, you have to present your project. Um, in this case, uh, there, there are all the details about uh, who styled, who was the stylist, who was the, all the, um, <clears throat> captions that uh, reveals uh, uh, who participated into the project. Uh, this is also a proposal of uh, a print advertisement, so everything that you can put. And of course, nowadays, it's really important that you also show how the physical uh, project uh, can be also um, put in the social media uh, to, um, communication tools. So in this case, it was Instagram, but also Facebook, uh, the Vogue Talent, which was uh, the company that uh, uh, the students participated to the project uh, platform and uh, all the videos uh, that uh, she produced uh, for the wash, the, this workshop. Uh, let's see an example of, uh, finally, uh, an example of Master in Fashion Style and Visual Merchandising. Uh, this is a very, uh, you can understand from the cover that, uh, of course, this reveals her personality. She was a very extrovert and uh, um, young ex extrovert uh, student. Um, so she really liked to play with uh, uh, font and layout. This is the index of the different projects. Then, of course, project by project, uh, this was a project with Versace. And of course, she was uh, the brief uh, that you can uh, read here. It was about uh, creating a new path uh, for the company in order to, um, to understand the younger um, customers, the uh, millennials. So it was a really fresh uh, and uh, interesting uh, um, mood board or taking inspiration from the different tribes uh, and uh, from uh, of course inspiration from England so as you can see it's uh, uh, really um, young and reflects the personality of uh, of the student uh, even the location that uh, she was using for the shooting um, then another project uh, with the greatest magazine, an independent uh, Italian magazine. And so she did uh, um, different shootings, 
for this, uh, but of course she was uh, as, uh, showing, uh, in this case, not only the final output uh, that is at the end of the workshop, but the process uh, which brought, who brought her to the final uh, development. Uh, yeah, the, she presented uh, two different girls living in the same period uh, with different uh, attitudes. Uh, so this one was a more classic uh, and street style uh, attitude, while the other one was uh, more technological. Uh, and so she used uh, all these different uh, props uh, from uh, high tech. Uh, sh yeah, of course, you can put if uh, you are interested also in journalism. This was an interview to Giovanna Castiglioni, um, the daughter of uh, famous uh, design Italian uh, Milanese designers. Then uh, Antonioli workshop that is a workshop on uh, um, by so all the selections and all the things. But as you can see she keeps uh, the same uh, layout uh, in uh, all the different projects and uh, yes uh, all the selections of the brand that she proposed for a new store of uh, antonioli in china so there are all the selections of the, these projects of these brands and then okay uh, the workshop also with Frida that is its social platform in Instagram and uh, Facebook uh, that is focusing on young uh, millennial so she created a sort of uh, um, weird way of uh, talking uh, to women uh, um, talking about uh, gen uh, body um, body um, positivity and uh, all the, the posts that she developed for the uh, social uh, social media using collage and this but this project helps her this is the shooting to find a nice internship uh, with uh, Anton Antonia one of the most important store here in Milan where she was in charge of the um, communication in a so social of all the products uh, yeah this is a, a project uh, with Virgil Abloh uh, which uh, she created the installation of uh, the products then of course all uh, the skills uh, and what you can do she was very able uh, to work uh, with collage so she liked to uh, put also this and uh, as I was saying uh, in the end uh, she this a uh, kind of uh, pro uh, portfolio helped her to find an internship at Excelsior so then she was hired there but anyway as a stylist and digital content uh, producer so she created different posts for their their social and uh, of course uh, this uh, expl explain uh, well uh, her um, career also Okay, most uh, I, I think that uh, uh, this is done. We are four minutes late. Uh, so, I mean, if uh, I will be interested if uh, there are any questions or if David can. Hello, uh, so Gianfranco, thank you very much. Uh, yes, guys, if you have any questions, uh, you can write uh, directly on the chat so we can uh, read the question and give the answer to uh everyone uh so please uh, feel free to do it uh, just to let you know that uh, this uh, uh lecture uh, is going to be recorded so we'll be available on our uh, youtube cha uh, youtube channel uh in a couple of days so beginning of the next week uh, so you can uh, have a look of everything uh any questions are you able to write on the chat uh, just uh, to be sure that you can write? Uh, yeah, because I cannot see any uh, questions. So, so let me try to. Let me try to write on the chat. Uh, because uh, at the beginning, there was uh, some. Uh, uh, mm. For you, yes, Gianfranco, but I, I don't see. <laughs> 
comments from uh, other students. Uh, yes, also Angela, that's fine. Uh, Angela, can you try to, uh, to check the setting option of uh, uh, Blackboard just to check if uh, uh, they can write on the chat? No, no, but I think that it's worth the chat because they, I see uh, that, that they replied with a lot of yes uh, at the beginning, so they can uh, are able, they are able to write if they want. Mm. But what kind oh. of job we get for fashion designing? <laughs> of course, first of all, of course, uh, as a fashion designer assistant. Uh, um, of course, uh, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, your question because uh, of course uh, not uh, all uh, everyone can become a fashion designer but you can work inside a company as a fashion designer assistant uh, it depends on the skills that you have because uh, if you are a maker, if you are very good uh, you can do uh, a lot of things inside uh, uh, a company. I have uh, this friend that is the creative director for Ermenel Gildo Zegna, and he was telling me that in his team there are 70 different uh, uh, people from fashion designer, but only 10 are fashion designer. The rest are uh, also pattern maker, or uh, they are developing uh, new textiles, new prints. So it depends on uh, what uh, you uh, you really want to to develop. Uh, in our school, we have also the opportunity to, uh, that you saw, to do also styling workshop inside the Master in Fashion Design. So uh, it's an opportunity that gives possibility of working as a, a fashion in communication, as a fashion stylist. And it's really important also to be a fashion stylist with a background in fashion design. Uh, what's yeah, I'm answering for Sakshi, for styling. What else uh, we can add apart from photo shoots? As in design, they have design process and technical drawings. Yes, no, of course, uh, you're right. Uh, you cannot do technical drawings about, but you can tell us uh, the development of the photo shoot. Uh, so starting with the mood board, uh, starting uh, with um, the analysis of, of uh, new poses, uh, the study, and also a storyboard uh, about uh, what kind of different uh, um, pages uh, and how they are, you are going to develop your fashion editorials. It's the development of the fashion editorial that is really interesting, not, not only the final output. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, I will appreciate the development, uh, starting from uh, the story, the storytelling that you want to tell in your photo shoot. So, yeah, mood board, of course, uh, um, potential selection of models, locations, uh, uh, analysis of poses. Uh, this is uh, really interesting. Snea. Hi, Gianfranc, I have my portfolio on the hands. Uh, does it work to present through or if I need to have a PDF of the same? Yeah, it's better because uh, uh, it's okay, Behance, uh, but uh, please, uh, uh, when uh, we uh, um, have to admit students and we have just a link, uh, it's so sad to look at a link and then uh, you have to move on Behance. Uh, just, uh, make it uh, a personalized portfolio every single time that you are um, you want to participate to an admission or for a professional uh, because uh, it's something uh, it's something different uh, yeah there are a lot of platforms where you can put your portfolio this means that you care more if you if you do and also this is something that i was uh, um, just uh, think about your portfolio that can be also there can be also a printed version so when uh, you develop a portfolio just think that they can be printed by the viewer so that they can have it uh, physically so just uh, think also to the way that you're going to create the layout for print uh, that, uh, yeah sorry that was some other does Behance profile have any significance? 
Uh, yes, of course, it's um, why not? Uh, but uh, of course, as I was saying, it's better that you send also um, a direct portfolio and not just a link. How can we develop a stronger styling portfolio? Yeah, this is something that I told you before, just uh, showing us uh, the process, not only the styling and uh, the, the final output, uh, selecting uh, if you can uh, uh, professional model because uh, this makes uh, a difference. Uh, do not show yourself in uh, as a model in the photo shoot because this means that you are not working as a stylist but as a model and uh, because there is a lot of to do during a shooting uh, so if you are acting as a model you cannot do at the same time the stylist so please uh, avoid uh, this and uh, yeah that is the process that we are really really interested Sorry, Gianfranco, there was a question from SG. Can we also include in-store mannequin styling for styling portfolio, or should it only include model photoshops? Now, it's up, uh, it's up to you. Of course, we'll make uh, it something uh, original because uh, uh, creativity is interesting. Uh, we really like uh, when there is something that is uh, um, completely disruptive uh, from the way that we are, were used to do. And now is the time where you can do something uh, really disruptive. So it doesn't care. It's okay, of course, uh, uh, if it's an original one and if there are high resolution pictures uh, and a nice storytelling, why not? Uh, yeah, of course you can use Mankin. Sorry, I, did, I didn't see that one. Hello, in regards to the fashion design portfolio lookbooks, it has been quite hard during this period of time to take images of recent collection garments on a model. Could this be a possible acceptation to yourself? Um, of course, uh, of course, uh, this is the time where everything is changing. I had a talk with different fashion designers that I, they are rethinking the way to show their products, so everything will be appreciated. The only thing is that just uh, keep it clear, uh, your project, uh, uh, give a, a short description of what it is about and why did you decide to do um, this kind of images. Because of the period, we saw a lot of interesting projects without models uh, in um, presenting the project, the product in different ways. And uh, we really uh, appreciate this kind of uh, change. Do not be too um, original. Um, there are a lot of fashion designers that are asking me uh, for students uh, because they know that uh, they can have uh, new ideas uh, from you. So just uh, do not uh, uh, be uh, standardized in uh, the way that you are shooting uh, because it's not uh, the right time to do this. So can I add anything other than digital in uh, my portfolio? I don't understand uh, uh, anything other than digital. Um, of course, uh, it's. Uh, it, it, I mean, uh, if uh, you are uh, talking about a photo shoot for a fashion magazine, of course, uh, uh, you can add uh, um, not only social campaign or branded content for social media. Any tips for making a creative mood board for styling? Uh, uh, this is, will be another lecture, of course, uh, how to create uh, a mood board. Just uh, I can tell you now that uh, be consistent. So every single image I see in your mood board should uh, uh, tell me about your final uh, photo shoot. So if uh, uh, then you want to change your mood board is something that is going to change according to the process of your project. So if uh, in the end there is something that probably you changed, uh, just do not keep uh, the same mood board, but change the mood board as well, because uh, it's, uh, it's the process, the development of the project. So just uh, 
uh, re look again at your mood board and if uh, you do not uh, find any consistency, any link uh, with the images and uh, your final output, you have to delete that image and put another one. Uh, you do not have to put a lot of images for a mood board. We are, um, must be clear and uh, it must uh, tell about uh, your story, the, the story that you want to tell, uh, about the colors, uh, about the mood. Uh, so just to make a selection of these. Uh, if uh, you have uh, uh, original uh, images, it will be better than uh, just uh, looking at Pinterest and taking uh, uh, from uh, downloading from Pinterest. Is it mandatory to give material description about uh, all the boards in the portfolio? Uh, of course, uh, if you give details in this case, especially if you are doing uh, uh, research on uh, new innovative material, uh, if you're talking about a sustainable material, uh, it will be really interesting uh, to understand uh, in a single word uh, that uh, you are a, an eco-sustainable, that you are, uh, you are interested in uh, um, eco-friendly fashion. So why not? Uh, yes, of course, uh, give uh, details. Details, we like details. Uh, we, do not we do not like long text, but synthesis. Good evening, sir. Which is more preferred, hand sketchings or digital illustrations? Yes, as I told you before, uh, no, not all, all all fashion designers are able to do hand sketching. Um, so, um, of course, uh, if uh, you are not uh, uh, good to work on uh, by hand, uh, you can make, uh, uh, you can use uh, digital illustrations. Of course, hand sketching reveals more of your personality, but uh, this is, doesn't change uh, our um, our uh, judgment about uh, your work. Cash up, would a portfolio be considered if there is no final out output? I mean, like no final constructed garments, but all the other boards and processes present in the portfolio? I hope I made myself clear. Yeah, I mean, you are developing all the process, then you do not have, of course, the Yes, of course, it will be accepted. Uh, it will be accepted uh, because uh, in, in this case, not all fashion designers uh, can create their own prototype. In our school, um, it's going to be compulsory in the design lab with an assistant to develop uh, uh, at least one prototype of uh, the fashion collection. Mm of the projects so one garment also but in this case you will have the help of the school assistant and the uh, the lab facilities aditya gianfranco i'm studying fashion design and i'm not really good at garment constructions but i'm quite good at design process so it's really important to be better in garment uh, construction um, I mean, at our school, you will learn a lot about uh, creating a garment and how to create a garment, how to create the pattern. You will be assisted, as I was saying, by um, a lab assistant, which is an expert uh, seamstress. So um, for the portfolio, it's not important if uh, you are not able to make your own garment. Um, most of the designers are not able. Uh, they are creative in different ways, uh, and uh, we accept this. Uh, but uh, in, in our school, we push you to develop, uh, to understand better the construction of the garment. Is there any alternative other than technical rendering of uh, the garments? Uh, technical drawings are really important. Uh, it's something, uh, I mean, uh, flat. Uh, the one that uh, um, if you want to produce a collection, you have to do. This is why, of course, uh, 
I, um, we have uh, a course uh, inside uh, our master in fashion designer that is about uh, uh, visual uh, representation, where we are going to uh, not to teach from scratch, but uh, we are going uh, to uh, improve uh, your skills uh, in uh, developing technical drawings. Uh, I have to say that uh, we admit students also without uh, an, uh, being expert in technical drawings, but it's something that we really are interested in because I think that in a professional life uh, you need uh, to tell other people how you have uh, thought about uh, um, the style of the, the garments. Uh, what kind of things will fashion, uh, a fashion style learn at the Homos Academy? Yes, of course, the profession of fashion styling uh, has changed a lot. <clears throat> Um, it's not, um, it's no more the way it was like uh, 20 years ago, uh, before the digital era, where for a photo shoot, uh, photo shoot uh, it took uh, like uh, 30 days, uh, um, but nowadays uh, it's uh, faster and uh, of course uh, it's uh, in a digital way. So uh, there are more opportunities for the stylist in this way. There is a lot of uh, requests for the e-commerce. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are really sad of looking at uh, static images uh, in e-commerce, uh, but we are proposing in our project uh, some new ideas uh, and uh, um, in order to catch the attention of uh, the potential customer on the e-commerce. So uh, there are a lot of uh, new stores at the big stores uh, that are developing their own website. So they, they are looking for fashion stylists. There is now this profession of e-stylist, um, e-commerce stylist. That is really uh, um, interesting. And of course, uh, a stylist can work also for the social media. Um, there are a few magazines, uh, but a lot of new websites, uh, new, uh, and everyone has got uh, is an Instagram account or Facebook account where they have to produce day by day branded content. So there is uh, this uh, kind of uh, opportunity for a for a stylist. For a stylist, uh, of course. So. Um, he learns also we, because the master is styling and visual merchandising. So he learns also how to uh, um, develop a concept for a, a, a historic piece with installations, window display, and things like that. So there is this double opportunity for a stylist also that is uh, also selecting the garments that uh, are going in the window display. Is there any sites for us to make a portfolio? Um, yeah, I, I, it depends on, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, five projects uh, are enough to understand uh, uh, your identity, your personality, your um, kind of skills. Um, doesn't depend on that, um, because if you put a lot of images, uh, it's, uh, it's okay. So I wouldn't care about the number of pages, but about the number of projects. Uh, uh, four or five projects are, uh, are good. Do we also have to add design spec sheets in our portfolio? I mean, complete measurements, detail, and cost sheets. In this case, not in your portfolio. I do, anyway, if uh, it's something that you did in your project, why not? It's some more information that you're giving about your skills, uh, that you developed a uh, cost sheet. Uh, it's, uh, it may be interesting because you have this approach to the market. Why not? Yes, uh, um, in our workshop uh, depends on the, the brief of the company we will be working with. Uh, um, some of them are they are not interested in cost sheets. Uh, some others, uh, yes, they want uh, some information about uh, the, the final cost of the product. Does a Behance profile have any significance? Sorry, we missed. The, ah, sorry, missed the response. Uh, yes, of course, I said that it uh, makes sense uh, to have uh, your profile on Behance because uh, you have a wider. Everyone can look and. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's important, but when you are really interested to attend a school uh, uh, for an admission or you have to do a job interview, 
I do not like to receive a link uh, of Behance that is uh, telling me that it is there. You can add uh, your link, you can personalize uh, the portfolio for that particular reason, and then uh, you can add the link of Behance uh, that will give further information. Yes, it will be really interesting if uh, the viewer is interested in looking at more projects uh, from you. Why not? Yes. How do students find the models for the photo shoots? Okay, in, uh, in our school, uh, we have professionals, uh, uh, professional stylists that will be program leader. Uh, yeah, <laughs> David, that we, is going to be program leader. Uh, and uh, they have a lot of contacts. So most of them, uh, uh, we have contact with model agencies uh, here in Milan, where you can have the opportunity to hire um, because they want, if they want models, wants to have, and even model agencies to have uh, pro, uh, um, images uh, from uh, other um, photographers. So they are interested in shooting with real models. Uh, so most of them uh, uh, you can get uh, from free, not in this period, but uh, we hope uh, in the future. Thank you. So Gianfranco, uh, yes. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Uh, and also You're you guys, uh, a lot of questions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, very interesting for us. Uh, mm. And uh, Again, uh, this lecture will be uploaded on our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any kind of information, you can write to info at domusacademy.com. And uh, what else? Thank you very much, Gianfranco. Thanks again. It